Today I thought we'd take a look at the Makita 18 volt lithium packs. This is a BL1815. And this pack gives an error when it's, or a fault when it's charging. I just thought we'd take this pack apart and look inside. I've already got two of the T10 security screws out. We do see some corrosion. Also, the batteries itself may have been subject to some liquid damage. So although some of these cells check good, we got some that's reading below a volt. And of course we can tell we've either had some leakage or either that's just liquid damage. And I did get this battery pack used, so I'm not familiar with the background of it. But what I'll do is I'm going to replace all five of these. With some 1300 milliamp hour cells and I typically solder mine but um you can do it however you want right be careful maybe solder but also you can spot weld your cells on choice is yours I got several videos showing a uh, replacement of cells so I'm gonna put a uh, all known good batteries in here and we'll check it out so back now after putting all five known good cells back in this pack just because I, I never have had to work on a Makita pack so I did want to see what it's going to take to uh, to get this pack going and I actually have them all about fully charged so I have checked um, just I think I checked it off camera but I have checked that this thermal coming back here which is the temperature switch or thermal across there is good. This 15 amp fuse is good, so that's two protection, uh, two protect the devices there. It checks good. We have a um, cell under or some kind of like cell detection there that instead of just coming across our 20 volt, we also have uh, the the very first cell coming back as a reference something um. To me, this kind of unusual that Makita does, and I haven't seen that on a, another pack. I've seen where they monitor all the cells back, but not exactly like that. I don't know what's underneath it yet. I have taken the screw out here, and that's what it looks like. A thermistor does pop out of the silicone. And boy, I don't know if you can see that. That corrosion is awful. So this uh, this board might be beyond repair. I may have to take it off and see if we can clean it up. But let's see, let's see with the new cells in there for now. Give it a charge and no dice. So that corrosion is definitely giving us a fit. I'm actually not 100% sure about that corrosion there. I don't think that was a device. I think that's just corrosion build up. That thermistor that we have here. About 8K. So. That just shows slightly warmer. Than an ambient. Maybe because I've handled it. Um. I don't think that would be anything to keep it from charging. On the other hand, that corrosion could be.
I believe I'm just going to cut this one close to the board. And I might have to solder that back, but I really don't want to mess with this. It looks like a fusible link, so it looks like we got some kind of high current fusible link here built in. The fuse, and then some type of thermal across here. So this is what the underneath of this board looks like. And I was troubleshooting this board, but then I realized I had seen these. You can get them online for anywhere from like seven to ten dollars, and they're supposed to be a replacement for the Makita. It does have a conformal like silicone coating on it. Comes with a temperature um, NTC there. Same location it seems. Are positive. What they call a CDT, like almost like cell detection. Well, this one says cell under. And they're negative, so. I just thought my first repair for the Makita that I might actually give this a shot. So back now after soldering the board on, the issue I had with the um, with the BL1815 and this uh, BL1 like X30 board that I had, the hole did not line up. The actual mounting screw hole did not line back up. The um, the NTC went in the spot fine. It fits in the the pins fit in the lineup uh, holes up front fine. I have no idea why they made that where it would slide off. But anyway, I just want to try it and see if it'll work. Hey, look at there. With a temporary measure. So this pack did charge up. So that's pretty neat for the price. I do enjoy fixing things, but when something's in this bad of shape, and maybe this is common for the Makitas, I'm really not sure. Um, it's definitely worth it to save the pack. Especially if your cells are good. This one, I did put some uh, some 1300 milliamp hour cells in them just to see if I could get it going. And then when this failed, it went on to this one. So I do have to be a little creative here with my mounting. But I believe it's going to be okay. I did not realize that this board was a little bit longer or wider, should I say. And... Um, this actual board was scored and it actually broke right off just with a little pressure so now it's the exact same width and I just brought the thermal back in to that spot in between the the board and the cells this goes a lot better when the battery case is flipped around right So 
I went back together okay, but I did, um, you might could tell in the video, I added a lot of extra tape around the uh, side for just a protection against the uh, battery ends. It was not there from the factory. And actually, it's a little bit bold, so I probably would go with a little bit thinner tape next time. And I may even redo it, but just put some cap tie tape. Something a little bit thinner. But for right now, I definitely know which one's my repair pack without even marking it. So for the money, I think that board's definitely worth it. If I have any um, bad results after testing it for a while, I'll, I'll put it in the description below. But um, if you like that video about the Makita battery pack today, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.